That is very threatening to a lot of bigger organizations. When you start having hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people, you can shift everything. If 1% of us become coherent, you can shift an entire civilization. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to go in there and fight that system. And I go, you know, that's not really good either, because yeah. if you're fighting the system, then you're contributing energy, whether it's pro or con, to that system. The way to fight the system is not to be part of the system. And that the intelligence community is very much afraid of, because that's something, A, they cannot control, and B, it would transcend their ability to alter the outcome. When we do that, then we'll find there's more of us than the other ones. And then all of us who are on the outside of the system actually become the new system. It's time for us to put our energy into what we are building up. We're building a new civilization. You are here on this broadcast because you're already part of what are called the cultural creatives. You're part of those people that are saying, give me another answer to what's going on. Everybody's mind is like a tuning fork because actually you can read brain activity from outside your head with magnetoencephalograph. If you're reading my brain function from outside, then what am I doing? I must be broadcasting my brain function. Most people have heard of the random number generator studies through the Global Consciousness Project. A question tonight, can you actually measure the emotional outpouring in a worldwide crisis? Sometimes scientists think that they have done just that. Their machines and computers found a bizarre pattern right after several global disasters. This was an experiment in which researchers placed dozens of random number generators around the world and analyzed their data to see if they could discover anything about global or collective consciousness. On September 11th, a few hours before the first plane struck, this network of random number generators became more coherent less random and more coherent. It may sound bizarre, but Dr. Nelson and his team have been at this for the better part of a decade. The first spike showed up in 1997 with the death of Princess Diana. Other events like the Concorde crash, the Madrid train bombing, and the Pope's funeral all registered on those random number generators. But early on the morning of September 11, the data went off the charts. The odds of this being a coincidence is less than one in 100 billion. This shows there is a deep relationship between collective consciousness and the physical world. Sociology studies of meditators, where they go into a community, say you have a town of 200,000 people, and they would send in 1% of the population equivalent, 2,000 people, to go into deep meditation. And they found that emergency room visits declined, violent crimes declined, uh, robberies, all kinds of negative behaviors declined, even though those people didn't even know they were in the city. Because there is this resonant effect through the force, if you want to look at it that way, through this entangled, interwoven consciousness field. And people who didn't even know these meditators were there became more ordered, more peaceful, more happy, et cetera, and so on. This was actually based on the studies done in quantum physics in which a container of helium was cooled down to absolute zero. When only 1% of the helium became aligned and coherent, the entire container went through a phase transition, instantly shifting into coherence and taking on almost magical properties, a state called superfluidity. So there was this transformation at that 1% point when a critical mass of people, and whether it's 1% or a fraction of that, depends on the state of consciousness of those who are practicing the meditation or a prayer or coherence. But at that point, you can shift an entire civilization. If we all become coherent, just 1% of us, like a molecule of helium, and we become aligned and coherent and move in the right direction, it will transform the other 99%, even though they don't know that we're doing it.
our thoughts, be they positive thoughts or negative thoughts, are vibrations sent out to the field. The vibrations are the sole source that controls the particle matter. And so our thoughts as vibrations are influencing the field. And this is exactly what quantum physics said. Yes, our thoughts are manifesting our reality. We also know the heart is a very serious generator of electrical vibrations and fields. You can read a heartbeat uh, about anywhere from 12 to 15 feet away from a person. You could take a probe and read the electrical activity of their heart. We now recognize, and especially through an organization called HeartMath, that if we put our consciousness coming through our heart and amplifies the consciousness a magnitude greater than what it is, then our consciousness has more power in influencing the character of not just our lives, but those around us. So the point is very simple. Each of us is a tuning fork. And if we can take that vibration and come from the heart, uh, we can change the vibration of the field. And the field is what governs the nature of matter. Uh, we have a very powerful influence. Today we are in a mass extinction, science has recognized. And the significance is it's human behavior that is manifesting this. And what we have to recognize is we have to change our consciousness and our behavior because our collective consciousness is unfortunately not supporting our viability on this world. That we are living out of harmony with the planet and out of harmony with each other. And this disharmony is disrupting the garden, simple as that. We are actually not going to an end, but we're breaking down for a new beginning. And the new beginning is a consciousness, a new image, a new way of behaving, a new way of learning to live in harmony. We're going from a Darwinian view where there's a struggle, a competition for survival, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a very stressful world, to a new world, a new world of understanding, a new evolution that recognizes evolution isn't based on competition, it's based on cooperation that we're creating a community. It's community that rep is representing evolution. That we're, stop focusing on the part that's coming down. You're seeing the chaos of a breakdown of a civilization that's not sustainable. Huh, that's why we're in extinction. And while that's coming down, you can either focus on the breakdown or you can start to focus on what's new and what we're building. Because if we redirect our attention in that way, then we will be supporting with our consciousness this building of a new civilization, not based on survival, based on thrival, based on thriving into the future. All of us are like tuning forks, but if we're all out of tune, then there's a tendency for even a tuning fork that tries to stay in tune will be pushed out of tune by something we call entrainment. And the issue is, how can you survive in this world? The answer is you must essentially detach yourself from this field around you, not be taken in by the stories, not be buy into the fear, not to buy into the threats on our existence, to start to recognize, look, we are creating these lives. If you buy other people's creation, then you manifest what they're creating. If you want what you want, then you have to not get engaged. And the more conscious you become, the less you are affected by the outside fields. And so this rising consciousness that we're seeing is the evolution of humanity to rise above the noise of the background. Then the competition and violence that we live by because of today's beliefs would disappear. And the reality is we are moving in that direction right now. Day by day, more people are taking back the power of saying, I'm not buying your belief. So if you have enough people that share the same level of mind, the same consciousness, they share the same emotion or the same energy, then they have a unity of consciousness that's pretty much working as a single-minded organism. Now, that is very threatening to a lot of bigger uh, organizations because it represents people in a state of unity when you have a group of individuals that share the same mind, that share the same information, that share the same desires, and you inspire them, well that feeds that energetic field and it becomes a, a, a collective consciousness. And as we know, collective consciousness affects pretty much everything. We have to go from this age of reductionism and separation and us versus them thinking to an age of where I say it's the unitive state. It's the state where we're connecting to an aspect of all things and all people and all creatures throughout the cosmos 
through the field of consciousness. Your thoughts right now are actually changing the field.